Welcome back. Attorney General Bill Barr gearing up to testify in front of the House Judiciary Committee. That's happening on March 31st. After news this past week, the former FBI director Andrew McCabe has escaped all charges from the DOJ in its investigation of his lack of candor and leaks in the Hillary Clinton investigation. Joining me right now is Fox News contributor, former Republican South Carolina Congressman and former House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy. Uh, Trey, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We are lucky to have you this morning as you are one of only two congressmen that were able to see the redacted information, two congressmen from the GOP, that were seeing the redacted documents that were so important to both of those investigations, the Hillary Clinton investigation and the Trump collusion Russia investigation. Why do you think McCabe uh, is getting off here from the DOJ? He's already admitted to lying, right, Trey? Is there something we don't know that the DOJ is clearing Andrew McCabe? Well, Andy McCabe is not being indicted for a very discreet fact pattern, which is simply the, the leaking of information to bolster his own credibility during the Clinton investigation. That's it. Um, and, and, and we should have known weeks ago when they were having trouble getting an indictment. If you're having trouble getting an indictment, then there's no way you're going to get a conviction. You've seen a change in the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Columbia. So he escapes indictment for that narrow fact pattern. But that has nothing to do with FISA and the initiation of Russia and, 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 and any other potential misconduct that Andy McKay may have engaged in. That's a really narrow, discreet fact pattern that he's not being indicted for. So it could actually actually be that he's cooperating with John Durham or that he's looking or a suspect in the John Durham now criminal probe. Is that right? Well, he's certainly somebody that John Durham would want to talk to, and it could range. It, 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 it can go the whole range from he didn't do anything wrong, and, and he did admit to misrepresentations, but that's a little bit different than intentionally uh, misrepresenting a, or an intentionally false statement. It could be that he's just simply not guilty. It could be that he's cooperating with John Durham, or it could be that he's still under investigation for other fact patterns not related to that discreet one with the leak. Um, in, in the Clinton investigation. I see. Let me ask you about John Durham and what he is looking at now, because we're all waiting to see what's going on, and we understand that he's been looking at John Brennan's uh, communication as well, uh, then uh, the head of the CIA. In your view, what is John Durham looking at? Marie, he's looking at three things, the factual predicate for this Russia investigation. And I'm not talking about the, the summer of 2016. I'm talking about stuff that happened in late 2015 and early 2016. Remember, the DOJ and the FBI told Paul Ryan and Devin Nunes and myself repeatedly and exclusively that nothing happened before June of 2016. No payments were made, no contacts with the Trump campaign. I'm sure John Durham is looking to see whether or not that's true. He's also looking at the FISA process and misrepresentations made to the FISA court. I think he's also looking at that ICA, that intelligence community assessment that John Brennan got done towards the end of the, the Barack Obama tenure to, to make sure whether or not uh, that was thoroughly investigated and whether or not all the right information made its way into that ICA. Yeah. Three important things, three separate things. And, and you were among those questioning a number of witnesses to try to get to the bottom of this. You actually questioned John Brennan, and John Brennan told you straight out the dossier had nothing to do with the FISA process. We now know that was one of the single things they used, the dossier, to actually get those FISA warrants, but I also want to show this counter intel activity uh, timeline that we have put together here, and it shows that General Flynn was paid to speak in Moscow in December of 2015, and George Papadopoulos was invited to a conference in Rome in March of 16, and then Mifsud, Joseph Mifsud, told Papadopoulos in April of 2016 that Russia had Hillary Clinton emails. The list goes on and on, April, May, all the way up to July 30th first when the actual counterintelligence probe uh, started, according to the FBI. So what about all this other stuff happening at the end of 15 and early 16, that these are serious informants running up against uh, Trump campaign people? How do you explain that if the investigation started in July, Trey? Well, thank goodness I don't have to. The folks at the FBI and the DOJ, they're the ones that are going to have to explain whether or not Michael Flynn speaking in Russia was something they were looking at 
separate or whether or not they were looking at that because he was an advisor to the Trump campaign, I, I, I could not be more clear. We asked the DOJ and the FBI repeatedly, did anything happen before June of 2016? And we, we asked them at Maine Justice, we asked them in a skiff in the basement of the Capitol, and the answer was always the same. Nothing happened with respect to the Trump campaign before June of 2016. And if something did happen, then either the FBI misrepresented facts to us, or it wasn't the FBI, it was another agency that was doing it. Both of those are important to know, and John Durham, I hope, is going to be able to answer that question. And of course, if it's the CIA, we know why John Durham is looking at John Brennan, as he was all over TV saying that the president committed treason when, in fact, he was running the CIA. Perhaps the CIA was sending these informants in. Real quick before you go, Trey, I gotta ask you about the exculpatory evidence that you have seen you broke the news on this program over a year ago that there was, you, you said that there was a transcript of a conversation between George Papadopoulos, I said that, not you, and an informant, where basically George Papadopoulos said to the guy, no, I would never do that, that's treason. What else do we need to know about that exculpatory piece of evidence? Well, I want you to imagine this, hypothetically, Maria. Uh, imagine that you're accused of a crime, and this is your response. Number one, I didn't do it. So factually, that's pretty important. Number one, I didn't do it. Number two, I would never do that because it is a crime for which you can be put to death, and it is a crime against a country that I love. All right, if that's your response to an accusation that you engaged in improper conduct, that is textbook exculpatory evidence. You really can't draw up a better piece of exculpatory evidence than I didn't do it, I would never do it, it's a crime to do it. So, so if that happened, um, then the court needed to know about it. This, this is more, a little more information that you gave us in so many words that is that transcript that you have to believe John Durham is looking at and everyone is looking at in charge because it was not given to the FISA court to get those warrants. They said that two of the four warrants were unlawful. I'm putting my money that perhaps more than two of them were unlawful. Congressman Trey Gowdy, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir.